Hey guys, Colin here, hope you're well. Today I'm gonna to talk to you about five of my favorite tools that I like to use for behavioral analysis and hopefully show you something new with them if you're already familiar with the tools as well. I'm gonna show you these in the context of a piece of malware called Adwind. Adwind is a remote admin tool, so it can take over your machine and perform all sorts of badness, but the aim is to steal your data. Uh, and it showcases quite nicely the kind of tools that we can use on a daily basis to uh, enhance our labs to make sure that we're analyzing malware super effectively. First tool I'm gonna to talk about is Process Hacker. I'm gonna whiz through these really quickly, by the way, uh, just to make sure that this uh, video is not uh, too long and boring. So the first tool I'm gonna to talk about is Process Hacker, and I can see I've got it on the screen at the moment. This gives me the opportunity to poke around processes, suspend them, uh, and also have a look at the strings in the memory, which is really uh, very useful to be able to do in order to have a look at what strings are in memory for a particular running process. Also, it gives you some network information as well, so you get a live view of what network activity is going on with associated processes processes. You can see services running on your machine as well if they're of interest to you. What I like to do, start of interest, is uh, just have a few extra columns in the uh, default display in addition to the default display. The first thing I like to have uh, is the command line. Uh, so that shows you the command line invocation of particular processes, so you can see how they were spawned. I also like to have ASLR, so you know whether a process has ASLR enabled or not, so you, need, you know uh, that if you need to disable it for your debugging purposes, and also I like to know the integrity level of processes as well, so you can see at what integrity level these processes are running, so you can see majority or high in system at the moment. Uh, so if we run this particular piece of malware, we'll be able to see in Process Hacker all of the processes spawning, uh, and also killing as being killed as well so you can see the red is when they disappear and the green is when they come up as a new process uh, and that happens really quickly so I didn't get a chance to pause the processes which opened and closed really quickly so that's a bit of a shame uh, but what we can do we see here at the bottom I'm left with this Java process and this child process of command.exe uh, and I can if I want to I can right click and suspend that process uh, and I've also got the properties here so I can see uh, the command line invocation of this particular process so you can see Java was executed with this um, this particular file was executed uh, and that's interesting because that's not the name of the file of the malware so maybe that's a new process which has spawned and we'll see that in just a second. What's interesting here though is I can have a look at the strings in the memory if I look on the memory tab um, and I've got all of the strings in the memory for this associated process and the ability to filter out as well. What I like to do uh, certainly with remote admin tools is filter out and look for the, uh, the actual config to pull out the network indicators and in this particular example if I just type in the word network uh, we, we can see the filtered results for all the strings in the memory that contain the word network and if we scroll down slightly here we see the config which has got the IP address of the bad guy and the port etc um, that they're operating on. Uh, so that's great, they're, they're cool indicators for us to, uh, to pull out uh, and deal with in our environments. But what happens about those other processes which opened and closed really quickly, it would be nice to get a timeline of what actually happened with this particular piece of malware. So let me just roll back my virtual machine. Uh, I'm just gonna go back to a, a clean snapshot just before the malware was infected. I'm gonna show you the second tool which I really like to use, which is Process Monitor, otherwise known as Procmon. Uh, so here is Procmon here. Um, and the great thing about Procmon is it will show you, you've got these filters at the top so we can look for network, uh, sorry, registry activity, file system activity, network activity and also process and thread activity as well. And it will give you a huge long list of uh, events which go on on your, on your system even before you even uh, execute any malware on your machine. So what we wanna do is actually uh, apply some filters because we don't wanna be looking at every single line of what's going on on the OS. And here what I'm interested in, if I press Control and L, I get this box up to apply my filters. Uh, and I've created a new filter here for where the operation is process create. And you've got an awful lot of filters you can apply. So where the operation is, for example, if you wanted to look for device changes, create file, lock files, process exits, etc. In this particular example, I've gone for process create, so I can see just a nice easy list of, um, of when processes get created. I also get to see the command line invocation associated with them as well. So I'm gonna press Control and E, or you can go to file and capture events to start this off, go back to my desktop, and I'm gonna run the malware again. And here, just flip back to Procmon, we can see all of these processes uh, being nicely stamped for us in a log file, which has given us a, a kind of historic view of what what's going on um, from the from, from each process which is being spawned. So you can see here at the top, uh, um, you've got Explorer at the top, which means I double clicked on my jar file. Uh, and then the first thing it did, it actually executed this VB script, uh, which was in local temp, uh, and then this uh, retrieve blah, 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 dot VBS file. Uh, you can see that was executed by cmd.exe under the guise of C script. 
Uh, and then you can see as well, there was an X copy command. Uh, so I didn't see that in Process Hacker, or if I did, it, it flashed up really quickly. Uh, and what's being copied here is the contents of the JRE6 folder in programs files. Um, all of those uh, contents, including subdirectories, which is the forward slash E, is being copied to this app data roaming Oracle folder. Uh, so that's interesting uh, and something which I didn't, didn't initiate and has obviously been initiated by the malware. Uh, and then we can see, again, we've got some other processes going on here that's being created. So uh, we have attrib.exe, so we, we're setting a hidden um, folder attribute for this particular folder here, which has got a random looking name, and you've got star dot star after it, so everything within that folder is going to be on a hidden att attribute. Uh, and again, for the parent folder as well, so the malware has, uh, has created this particular folder and given it a hidden uh, hidden context. We can see the next thing it does uh, after that, it goes into that folder and executes this rather random looking um, file, which uh, must be a JAR file because Java has been uh, Java is the one that's executing it. And then we have a repeat kind of activity. We see two VB scripts being executed uh, again by the uh, by the jar file. So what seems to be happening here is the, the jar file is executing, it's copying itself to a new location and we can have a look at that if we wanted to, we could filter out and have a look and say, wait, where is the operation equals file write? Um, oh, sorry, beg your pardon, create file. Um, excellent, and then we're gonna apply that we get loads of stuff on the screen here, um, but what we can see is all, all, all the different uh, processes which actually created a new file, we get to see the results of that as well as any other previous filters. So we can kind of scroll down and see whether anything is of interest to us that, uh, that kind of fits the bill. And we can see here, so Cscript created this file here, which is the uh, the VB script file that we that we saw before. Uh, we saw the other ones as well. We've got the other VB script files here and here again. Uh, and we've also got, um, yeah, so plenty of plenty of stuff that we could search through and just kind of filter out if we needed to. Um, so all sorts of rows in here. Don't necessarily need to go into every single one of them, um, but needless to say, that it's very very powerful in terms of the uh, the kind of context that you can get from um, from from the actual logs themselves. Here you see the uh, the jar file uh, Java process rather creating this particular jar file, which is this weird and wonderful name. You've also got the option to right click and go jump to, and it'll jump to that location. So you can see some stuff which the the malware has already created. We've got this ID uh, text file which has got my UUID in there, um, and then also this particular jar file here which uh, is is named some some kind of random name interestingly enough if we just have a look at uh, the the file hash of the original uh, jar file I, I, that I executed uh, and also the actual um, let me just drag and drop this particular file here we see this the, the two hashes match so those are actually the, the, the same file one and the same so the jar file has just copied itself to a new location called itself something random to kind of disguise itself and then re-executed itself as well so that's cool that's great fantastic what would have been nice let me just remove that filter for create files just one second just to clean up our view a little bit what would be nice is actually to see what these uh, vb scripts uh, files contain so let me just go into uh, the temp folder uh, but actually what i see is that they're not there anymore uh, so that's a little bit annoying um, so the malware has obviously executed that script written the script executed it and then got rid of it uh, without me having a chance to kind of debug it. So that brings me on to my third tool. Uh, and let me just again, go back to a clean state for my uh, for my snapshot just before we we're infected. And the third tool I wanna to talk to you about is really, really super useful. Although albeit just only runs on a 32-bit machine and that's Capture Bat. I absolutely love Capture Bat because not only does it give you the option to record activity from uh, like we've just seen in Process Monitor, it also gives you the option to um, record modified or deleted files. Uh, so that's really, uh, super useful because what we can do if we just have a look at the uh, command line options that we get we have uh, we can give it uh, the command line option L which will output um, to a log file we can give it dash C which will copy files into a log directory when they're modified or, or deleted and that's what we're interested in and also to give it dash N it, it can also create a PCAP for you for the traffic during the time in which you uh, you run capture back for so we're only interested at this moment in time in, in um, dash uh, C just to give it uh, give us a log of any modified files. You can see Capture Bat will tick away in the background quite nicely. Uh, and then what we'll do is again, we'll, we'll execute the same malware and we can see those processes again in Process Hacker kind of opening and closing really quickly. Uh, the X copy, the Java commands, uh, the Java process, etc. Um, and once we feel like we're in a position where the malware
hour has done its thing. Uh, so I kind of feel like it's uh, it's working its way through now and I'll, I'll maybe just give it a few more seconds. All you have to do to, to close down Capture Bat is just press Enter in the command window uh, and you'll see that it's, it kind of closes itself down and it compresses everything into, uh, into a different log file for you. Um, and this is just going to take a second. We'll let it you, you know, kind of think this over and then we can have a look and see exactly what it's found for us. Right, that looks like everything is okay. Well, that's perfect. Uh, let me just open an Explorer window here at this particular location, and we can see that it zipped it up for me. Uh, and then let me just close this down. We have uh, some log files in the zip here, which uh, will give us hopefully everything that we need. Um, let me just do that again. And let me go into uh, log files. And let me just extract that to my desktop. Um, and then we can have a look and see what was batty modified and deleted. There we go, deleted, C drive, uh, let me go back, users, CDH, app data, local, temp, and here we have the four VB script files which were removed uh, by the actual malware and we can now edit these and see exactly what they contain. So we can see this particular script is um, enumerating all the firewall uh, products on the machine, uh, so that's obviously useful for the malware to know about in case it needs to bypass anything. And here the second script is enumerating all of the antivirus products as well, so it knows what AV is, is installed on the machine. If we have a look at the, the third and the fourth one, we see actually it's just a repeat. This one is enumerating the, v, uh, the, the AV uh, and this one is enumerating the firewall products and the reason why it's doing that is because the malware actually executes itself twice. So the first time when I executed it and then the second time when, um, I, uh, when I executed the malware it then copies itself to that random location. It removes itself from, from the previous location so you'll notice um, that it, uh, it, re it called itself the, that random looking name what have you and then invoked itself under that random name again and by doing so it's going to run through that enumeration of the of the firewall AV as well. Uh, okay, so that's super useful. Uh, the last thing, sorry, the uh, the fourth thing I want to talk to you about then is my fourth favorite tool, uh, and that is how to monitor the network traffic. And let me again just go back to a clean snapshot. One of the obviously a lot of people use uh, Wireshark to monitor their uh, network activity on a machine, and Wireshark is super useful, very super powerful, uh, fantastic. A lot of malware does look for Wireshark though, and might might well behave differently. So actually, a piece of software I like to use is Microsoft Network Monitor. Uh, I find this a, a really good protocol parser. It can save PCAPs in the same format as Wireshark can. So if you if you happen to take a capture um, in this particular uh, piece of software and wanted to view it later in Wireshark, you can do it. It's totally uh, compatible. Um, and so what I'm going to do is just going to start off the process here uh, of uh, monitoring for network activity in Microsoft Network Monitor. And I'm going to run the malware yet again and then just go back to it and then we can see if we can pick up the same uh, activity that we saw earlier on um, from the actual config. And we see that there is um, a really, really handy feature of Microsoft Network Monitor is the fact that not only does it give you all of the traffic on your machine, it breaks it down by process as well. So here at straight away, we can see the same IP address uh, and the destination port of 2889, which is rem remember the same IP address and port number that was in the config that we pulled from strings in memory. Uh, but we can see it really, really cleanly. If, we, if I was in Wireshark, I probably have loads of other noise that I'd have to filter out, um, and and all sorts of you know ARP uh, ARP traffic and SSDP stuff going on, and, and all stuff I'd have to kind of think about and filter. This um, uh, piece of software from Net Network Monitors just makes it kind of really easy for me and really clean to see exactly what process is generating exactly what traffic. Um, so it's super, super useful. And again, you can kind of break this down so you can have a look at different conversations uh, within each process and you can obviously extract any particular uh, binaries if, that, if they were being returned, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so yeah, super, super, super useful. My final piece of software that I really love to use is, and I don't need to... Um, clean my VM for this one is auto runs and this is from sysinternals which is obviously from the Microsoft suite of software. Um, auto runs is fantastic because it shows you the persistence mechanisms or certainly can do uh, show you an awful lot of persistence mechanisms that malware likes to use in one easy friendly to use um, screen here so we can have a look at everything. We don't need to look at everything but what I look, like to look at is the log on tab and also, also the scheduled tasks tab uh, just in case malware likes to create itself as a scheduled task in this case it hasn't but here if we flip back and we see the logon page we see here there's an entry in uh, hkey current user software microsoft windows current version run which is an exceptionally popular run key for malware to use in order to uh, stay persistent we have an entry here which is a rather random looking name and it launches java we can right click this we can say uh, jump to entry and we can see go straight to it in registry and we can see exactly what's being invoked so java is invoking that weird and wonderful long binary which is the same malware that we executed or this has the same 
same hash as the malware that we executed uh, to begin with. So there's the persistence mechanism that will obviously survive a reboot. So basically, if even if I delete my original file um, that I executed on the desktop, this malware will survive a reboot and automatically um, re-establish its connection with the bad guy just by um, um, having this particular entry in the run key. So I hope that's useful. There's my five key uh, tools for you. The first one was Process Hacker. Then we had Process Monitor. Uh, you saw how to uh, recover deleted files by malware from by using Capture Bat. You saw how to use um, Microsoft Network Monitor, which can look for uh, network traffic by process. And now you can see a really quick and easy way as well to have a look at uh, persistence mechanisms by using auto runs. So hopefully that was useful to you and uh, good luck.